What's up guys and gals and today we are bringing you another sunny review of Wartech Fighters developed by Drakhar Dev and published by Blowfish Studios. Wartech Fighters is a action packed mech fighter where you'll be fighting for the rebels against the evil mighty Zatros Empire. Now admittedly there isn't much of a story in this game so I won't go into more details but what this game does have is a lot of action packed gameplay that is pretty fun. At the start of the game you'll enjoy some gameplay of a super overpowered mech that teases you on how strong you'll be one day but you start with the choice of three different types of mechs the hawk the lynx the rhino with all different stats in endurance which is your overall health speed which determines how fast your mech moves aim which matters because the higher the stat is the more the auto aim picks up my least favorite energy which determines how much you can use your attacks and lastly, it's just the normal attack, which is your damage output. So consider these at the start, as you won't be able to change it for a while until you unlock different war mechs down the line. But first, before I go into details of how much the mech you control has different attacks, I have to start off by mentioning that this game uses an energy bar that you'll see down below. The blue energy bar will dictate how much you can spam your ranged abilities. And right off the bat, this is something that did frustrate me with the game as even the basic light machine ag gun attack used energy. But with that said, your mech has three different range attacks. The basic attack you use as a light machine gun style attack uses low energy, but spam it enough and it does deplete at a hard clip. Your second option will be a heavy attack that does really good damage but depletes your energy bar a ton and there is a risk versus reward using this as if you deplete your energy you'll be AWOL and you'll be unable to attack for a few seconds leaving you extremely vulnerable. Third you have homing missiles that I found extremely unreliable on any moving targets and I used more for just stationary enemies. These didn't use a ton of energy and were a bit more flexible but they only did okay damage. As with the attacks, we also have a speed boost that lets you travel across the map in short bursts, but this I had to really temper the use on because it would use up energy as well, meaning if I used all this boost to get to the next objective and then I had a dogfight, I would have no energy for the battle that I just boosted to get to. Also have a shield that reduces incoming range damage. I typically found this not as useful, but I used it nonetheless. It seemed better to try dodging homing missiles, but sometimes if you're being hit by several angles, the shield comes in handy as a way to mitigate some of the incoming damage. Last but not least, you also have the ability to perform an execute attack when an enemy is at low health. This is going to be extremely vital to your success as when you perform these execute attacks, they will replenish some of your health. But most importantly, it will replenish your energy, which gives you the ability to spam your attacks more. Keep in mind, you can't use these on other mechs, but you have the option of using it on smaller ships. Then we have the mech-on-mech -mech sword battles, which I had a love-hate relationship with. At first, I'm like, whoa, this is totally badass to have these encounters. And for the most part, I enjoyed it. But I felt the timing of the attacks and the dodging were a bit weird and off. You could do light and heavy attacks, you can block with your shield, you can dodge by moving. There's even some counter attacks, but you're basically whacking each other with your swords and defending with your shield. You have the option to engage in these attacks or just battle out against other mechs from ranged. As long as you keep your distance, they won't engage you. But towards the end of my playthrough, I felt me winning these encounters was more of me having good gear to win these melee fights against other mechs than it was me outskilling the mechs if that makes any sense. One of the awesome parts of this game that I did like was the upgrades and the mech customization. You can change your mech's color and patterns and make it your own. You upgrade the head, arms, torso, legs, shield and sword. The head is just for the basic armor but then you have the arms which is the light machine gun attached to your arm. The torso is the heavy attack gun mounted over your shoulder so basically your heavy missiles. Then you have the legs, which were for your speed boost and armor. Then you have the shield and sword, which are self-explanatory. All these items cost money to upgrade that you get as a reward at the end of missions. And the money you receive will also be slightly based on how well you perform in the mission. So if your aiming is really good, you will see a bit of an uptick in the cash you receive. There's also a leveling system here, and there's not much to note here. It looked as though leveling basically just increased your health and nothing else and act as more of a gate to unlocking new types of weapon and specializations. As for the research and specializations, this is another aspect of War Tech Fighters I found pretty neat. As you're battling through the missions, you will uncover tech that you can acquire that will give you the ability to unlock new weapons and gear for your mech. These were very random in the missions and I actually had a hard time understanding when I was finding these as I would just get a random prompt on my screen that I found something new. 
but the research themselves is something that you will utilize as this acts more like a skill tree in the game. As you gain cash, you will be unlocking little mini bonuses to your mech like attack, defense, energy, and the ability to unlock special tech. The attack bonuses range from just simple attack bonuses to your weapons. Defense will range from just being able to be more resistant to incoming bullet damage. Energy will improve your usage of your attacks. As I mentioned earlier, when you spam certain abilities, your energy will drain fast, so this can help mitigate this a bit by upgrading in this research. You have the special research, which will be your basis of unlocking new types of armor and weapons on your mech, like being able to upgrade to energy type weapons or unlocking the ability to use force field shields. Also bonuses to mech melee fights or even increasing the range of your aiming reticle, making it easier to hit targets. Also, the ability to unlock brand new mechs will be in this research specialization. To say the least, there feels like there's almost an unlimited amount of customization and route you can go with your mech, which I like. But with all that said, let's get into more of the gameplay of this game. And this is where the bread and butter of this game is and the most fun I think you'll be having as you'll be gunning down ships and rival mechs and just having a pure blast here. And the gameplay will consist of you aiming with your huge reticle box that does have a bit of an auto aim feature on the consoles which I did like because as long as you were able to aim in the general direction of where your enemies were, you'd hit the target dead on. There was times and moments in this game where you would just watch the chaos unfold right before your eyes as you see your comrades engaged in a heated dogfight or you yourself going in there and being the badass who just tips the scale to your faction's balance. The missions themselves were nothing to write about as you had moments where you were told to just clear out a group of baddies or more often than not you had parts of the missions where you had to go find a way to unjam a signal or do a puzzle mini game to take down a shield. But this is where I segue to what I didn't particularly enjoy with Wartech Fighters. My biggest gripe was the difficulty and how they approached this part of the game. Now personally I have zero problems with making missions hard and welcome it in any game as I enjoy a hard game. I for the most part cruised until the towards the end of my playthrough as I reached this mission in which I was getting totally demolished and my mech would die in under 20 seconds. I didn't like the stark difference in difficulty when I had just beaten a dozen missions prior with no issues and then this one came out of nowhere and just kicked my butt. Where I have my big gripe is how I had to progress outside of this mission to make it to where I could beat this mission. This game has what's called a simulator that you will recognize from the game tutorial. You go back into this simulator and you take on various missions and challenges ranging from speed boost missions to clearing enemies to timed events. These missions either rewarded you with experience to level your mech or cash to upgrade the components on your mech. This was not something I could avoid. While some of these simulations were fine, I didn't enjoy most of them and felt like this part of the game is something I couldn't avoid. I had to do these simulations to continue to progress in the game. I could redo old missions in the simulator, but the problem was that it only gave you experience and it's not the coveted cash that you needed to upgrade your mech. It was a bit of a bummer to have to be forced to do this to eventually progress through but I got through it and it took me an over an hour and this is a part of the game that I feel could be a little bit more evolved by having the old missions you've beaten redone in the simulations and instead of just giving you experience giving you cash and that way it's more of an incentive to try to just get your mech better and do it with leveling and getting experience at the same time. With all that said though War Tech Fighters was a fun experience for me and while I admit this was my first mech game in probably 15 plus years, I really enjoyed my time with this game. I enjoyed the dogfights and the gameplay and that's where it really shines. I personally think this game runs well and it looks great on the Nintendo Switch so if you're playing this on the console, on a different console or a PC it's going to look way better. The game ran really well and one of the underrated parts of this game is going to be this heavy customization and routes you can go with building your mech. I think this part is almost so vast that I can see people being possibly overwhelmed on where to focus their cash and where to invest. But I say go with what you'll enjoy as this game for 20 bucks is going to be a steal. I had to put in quite a few hours in this game and I only reached 12% of the campaign which was very surprising. So for 20 bucks, I think you're gonna be getting a ton of value here. So for me, the game is getting a solid seven out of 10. And the reason it's not getting a higher grade is because I was not happy with the simulation part as that forced me to play a part of the game for a while I did not enjoy and I was ready to stop playing. So that docked a point for me. I also wanna briefly mention that the missions themselves get a little repetitive. Also, the energy bar depleting as quickly as it did drove me a little nuts, 
but there's enough with this game to really sink your teeth into. Gameplay is super fun and intense and epic. The mech customization is awesome and fun to progress through. The game looks great in my opinion and it runs extremely well. You'll also be getting a ton of hours of gameplay here for 20 bucks. So I think you're getting your money's worth. With all that said, that's going to be it for me on this review. If you guys enjoyed this review, consider subbing to the channel for more reviews and gameplay videos. Consider smashing that like button as it helps others find the video. Comment down below your thoughts on War Tech Fighters and if you enjoyed your time with this or if you think it's a crap game. Thanks everyone. I hope all of you have a sunny day.